Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday afternoon, sort of lunchtime here in Australia and the market is absolutely pumping. Bitcoin above $43,000, so really starting to move uh, quite nicely. Now again, let's be you know mindful that there's probably going to be some kind of correction and it'll be something likely to cover any CME gaps that are made, but you know, no guarantees in life, but things are looking nice and positive at least on the market front there are still some you know sort of regulatory things that we have to watch out for and things like that and we'll have a look at them in some news stories but let's just look at how the market's doing at the moment so 1.78 trillion up 52 percent bitcoin dominance 45 percent and gas prices actually rising a little bit so we'll have to wait and see you know how uh, eip 155 1559 uh, has worked I mean, really, it wasn't supposed to so much lower the fund, uh, lower the gas fees. It was just supposed to kind of make them that they get to a cap. So there's a point where just everyone kind of pays the same gas prices. Not some were cheaper and some were more expensive. So again, two dollars seventy six. It's still too much, uh, particularly for micro transactions. But I suppose if you're setting, you know, like fifty, a hundred dollars, you probably don't mind doing that. But again, you know, there's still more to come from Ethereum with. ETH 2.0 and there are layer 2 solutions out there but yeah that's still not ideal but again we'll have a look at some stuff around EIP 1559 very shortly but I mean look it just looks like a sea of green at the moment everything is up so doing quite nicely but let's have a look what's performed the best in the top 100 in the last 24 hours at least all right, there we go, Ravencoin, uh, you know, ICP coming out of nowhere. This did get absolutely hammered, and again, this was 400 and something dollars. I think 420, 460 dollars after its launch, and went all the way down to, I think, 46 dollars, 42 dollars. So, yeah, very, very interesting, and just jump some there, so moving quite fast. Filecoin, uh, Holo, look, double digits, a lot of sort of 15 plus percent, and again, in 24 hours, that's pretty good. And look, I mean, just nice gains all across the board, really. Let's have a look, though. What about losses? Is there anything that hasn't performed well in the last 24 hours? Oof. Ecash, right? Quant, I mean, that had a good pump, so that was bound to happen. Uh, Thorchain getting a bit of a pullback. Theta as well. But look, really, only one. Uh, Ecash got absolutely kind of monstered there. And then, you know, Theta, uh, Thorchain and Quant, nothing too bad. And they had gains in the last few days. And likewise, you know, Voyager token here down a tiny bit. Again, that had a really good pump. So, Generally, the markets are looking pretty good. And again, up 5.2% in total and nearly getting back to that $1.8 trillion level. Still got a ways to go for us to get back to that sort of 2.7, I think we got 2.7 trillion, you know, probably three, four months ago now. But things are slowly starting to creep up. Now, let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. As we can see, it did come down here and then boom. So again, we look at that Wyckoff accumulation. It's supposed to come up, come down, come up, and then come down again. And again, it it's not going to be exactly the same as, you know, what the chart will show you. But it is supposed to come chop around here a little while before it slowly starts to make its way back up. And it basically get, did come and kind of bounce off its high point came down again pretty much retested uh, the kind of average and now starting to make its way back up but we still have to break this line but what's interesting is we are finally above that $42,000 level and we got to close above it now we just have to wait and see how this candle does again it's still very very early and it is the weekend so I kind of expect that we might come up to here get rejected come back down uh, retest this over a few more days again maybe the 11th of August somewhere thereabouts before we start to make our next way up if it's going to play out according to Wyckoff accumulation that is all right couple of interesting stories so we all know EIP 1559 was released the other day so the highly anticipated London hard fork has launched on Ethereum without a hitch and real-time results can now be seen of transactions fee burning so this is interesting. In under 24 hours since London went live, around 3,735 ETH have been burnt. That was uh, in 24 hours. There wasn't that many mined. 
Uh, so very, very interesting. Now this equals around $10 million of Ethereum at the com current prices of 2,700. I think it was a little bit more. Where are we now with Ethereum? Yeah, there you go, 2,900. So getting oh so close to that, excuse me, uh, $3,000 mark and you know, I, Ethereum was at 4,000, I think 200, 4,400 a few months ago. So even that still has a way to go before it's gonna get back to its old all time highs. Well, this one I found very interesting because he only just started there not long ago, but Brian, Brian Brooks says goodbye to Binance US after only three months working as its CEO. Now, R Ricardo de Ross did the same thing three weeks ago with Binance Brazil. So I am actually a little bit concerned about Binance at the moment and why these people that were brought in to help get them regulated and all the rest of it have up and left. Uh, you know, I am concerned that maybe they saw some things uh, while they were working there that had them concerned and that they kind of wanted to jump ship before things got really bad. Now, I'm not trying to spread any FUD, but it is just concerning. Both of these gentlemen were considered high-profile uh, acquisitions for Binance to again help them get regulated and all the rest of it and with only a matter of months again both of them are gone so I am you know worried at the moment I, I don't have any Binance coin or anything like that but I like Binance I've used Binance plenty of times but this definitely has me worried at the moment and so I'll be keeping an eye out for what's happening uh, and again there is you know talk that there's a coordinated attack on Binance because of how big they are and you know whether this has played a part in it. I don't know. I don't know. Again, maybe you know Ricardo and Brian. You know, again, got some inside information that you know Binance is in trouble. And again, I'm not saying that is what's going on. It just looks, yeah, it, it's concerning. Uh, if I was with Binance, I would definitely uh, be worried about that. Again, it doesn't mean it's all coming to an end and Binance is closing down or anything. But concerning that. Yeah, two big names and big acquisitions have both left in a short amount of time. Now it says down here, Brooks did not elaborate much on the details, simply explaining that there were differences over the strategic direction of the exchange. Now what that strategic direction is, uh, you know, would be very, very interesting. Wouldn't you love to be a fly on the wall, you know, uh, in meetings with these two uh, and the Binance board members and uh, CZ as well to find out exactly what was going on. but. Yeah, Binance, they just can't catch a break at the moment, whether it's US, Brazil, Thailand, Europe, you know, they're just, they really are copying it from uh, all avenues at the moment. So, yeah, watch this space to see what happens with Binance. Right, JP Morgan, they have granted institutional investors access to cryptocurrency funds. So only their institutional investors. It's quite funny that, you know, they were hating on cryptocurrencies for ages, Jamie Dimon, you know, anyone who was trading it, blah, blah, blah. Turns out they've been buying it for a while now and they're letting all their high end, their most valuable customers, as they like to say, uh, trade in cryptocurrencies, but the average Joe, uh, still not allowed. And it's also funny the way that they spin that though. It's like, oh, we let our institutional investors do it first because if they lose money, they can afford to lose it. And it's like, oh, yeah, but they also make the biggest amount of money when you do it that way. So yeah, I, I don't know how much I believe that that's the reason they do it, that, you know, it's to protect the little guy. No, I, I think that is a, uh, a bit of a cop out and, you know, we can see that this space just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger and they are letting all the, you know, the selected sort of few get in early. And if you are in, then, you know, you're not one of JP Morgan's selected few, but it just shows how early you still are. All right, this, this is quite amazing. The power of NFTs and, you know, how crazy things are. So someone brought a CryptoPunk NFT for four hundred and forty three dollars and sold it for four point four million dollars in ethereum so that's a thousand plus sorry a million plus percent return in less than three years good lord i wish i had have paid more attention and gone and bought some crypto punks yeah that would have been so amazing but in all fairness i probably wouldn't uh you know if i only bought like one or two i probably wouldn't have sold them but you know if you were smart enough and bought you know a number of crypto punks back in the day definitely you know release a few for you know 4.4 mil why not all right the sec 
they are coming after people in crypto at the moment. So SEC claims first enforcement action in $30 million fraud case involving DeFi project. The label of the offering as decentralized and the securities as governance tokens did not hinder us from ensuring that DeFi money market was immediately shut down and that investors were paid back, said the SEC. Now, as long as they're going after dodgy projects and things like that, I've got no worries, but if they're just going to have a kind of, you know, a blanket sort of, you know, spray of everything, you know, uh, that had a sort of ICO, then that's a bit of a worry. But, you know, it, it does sound like DeFi and money market were doing some dodgy stuff. So according to the project's white paper, it was a permissionless and fully decentralized protocol to earn interest on any Ethereum digital asset backed by real world assets represented on the chain. Billionaire Tim Draper also got behind these guys. So it'll be interesting to see if he was able to get his money back. So the SEC claimed that Keo and Acri, that's the guys that uh, started it, invented it, whatever you want to call it, co-founders and that, misrepresented how the company was operating to investors and did not reveal that it would be unlikely to pay interest and profits uh, from offering and selling M tokens as well as DeFi Money Market's DMG governance tokens. Instead of purchasing car loans as the project claimed, the SEC alleged the pair use personal funds uh, as well as funds from blockchain credit partners to make interest payments for MM token redemption. So doing a little bit of a dodgy, making it seem like things were happen happening and you know people were making money the way they thought they were, but it wasn't really happening that way. So you know if this is all true and I can only assume it is, than I am for this kind of regulation. You know, we can't have people making up these programs and saying that something's going to work some way and then it's not actually working that way. You know, the you know, basically, you know, selling people uh, on lies and things like that are, are definitely concerning. And, you know, is this just going to be one of, you know, a number of kind of DeFi projects that might have to face something like this? Only time will tell. Now, last but not least, so there's a new bill in the Ukraine which will allow payments in cryptocurrencies. But this uh, part that I'll get to shortly, we'll just go to it uh, straight now. So it said it would be quite legal to pay with cryptocurrencies in Ukraine through payment intermediaries that enable crypto to fiat com, uh, conversions. So what you do is you're not really... Uh, Paying in crypto, you're going to use like a debit card or a credit card, you know, crypto.com card. And what it will do is convert your crypto to cash for the vendor. So you're not actually paying in crypto. It's just a quick conversion sort of thing. And I think that that is actually one of the ways that the dollar is going to be saved through cryptocurrencies. Because so many people are going to go out there and buy cryptocurrencies. And the old institutions, old finance and that, they want excuse me, the dollar to last as long as they can. Even though they, you know, probably sort of suspect at least that the dollar's not going to last, they're going to do everything they can to try and make it last. And I think this is one way that they kick that can even further down the road is, you know, everyone's going to be pouring money into cryptocurrencies. And so they're going to let you, you know, buy things, what looks like you're buying with cryptocurrencies, but you're not. It's crypto into fiat uh, and vice versa if there's, you know, things coming back the other way it'll be fiat into crypto and that is how the dollar will last that is how they're going to get all their taxes and things like that so it says here a new cryptocurrency related bill in ukraine will allow payments in cryptocurrencies like bitcoin despite not recognizing crypto as lingual tender a government official claimed and again i think that is how it's going to work all over the world if they allowed you to actually pay in crypto so there was no change to fiat that is when the dollar truly would be dead. But I think this is the way they go forward. This is how they help the dollar survive for a little bit longer. It still won't survive long term. Uh, it's controlled by a government. And uh, yeah, I said this a long, long time ago. I actually believe cryptocurrency will save the dollar. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see. It's not financial advice. But look, that's it for me. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, again, not a whole lot of news over the weekends either. So yeah. These are the stories that I could find that I found interesting and I hope you find interesting as well. But that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train at the moment. You should be. And I'll see you next time.